Hallo Leiden. Nee, hallo Leiden. Goedemiddag Leiden. Hallo Leiden. Bonjour Leiden. Hallo Leiden. Bonjour Leiden. Hello, Leiden. Marhaba, Leiden. Ciao Leiden. Hi, podai Leiden. Hallo Leiden. Welcome to the newest episode of our weekly English speaking show. As you know, our show is about stories, stories of international community in Leiden. And we have two amazing guests today in our studio. We have Khalid Ahmed from Egypt. Welcome to our studio. Thank you. And we have Kimi Romain from uh, Curaçao. Yes. Curaçao. Curaçao, exactly. Yeah. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. Um, so maybe I should have a little bit of introduction from both of you, and then we will switch to our special tradition. So Khalid, why mm-hmm. don't we start from you? Who is Khalid? So uh, my name is Khalid Ahmed, and I live here in Leiden for almost two years mm-hmm. uh, ago. Uh, I came directly from Egypt to work here for a job. So it was like a short story, straightforward one. I got uh, a message on LinkedIn from a recruiter that uh, there is an opportunity for me to work here because I'm originally a pharmacist and I have good experience with working with different uh, multinational pharmaceutical companies. So I did uh, quick interviews and I came here to finalize everything in Leiden. Then I came here in June 2019. Beautiful, fast track. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. What about you, Kevin? Who's Kevin? No, I'm uh, Kevin. I'm uh, 33 years old, and I live a little bit longer than uh, Khalid in uh, Leiden. I live here from 2006. I came from Curaçao uh, to study here in uh, Leiden, and I never went away, so uh, I like it so much here. So. Mm. Lovely. Yeah. Um, now that little tradition... We asked both of you to bring little items that have personal value. It could be big too. Um, why don't we start from you, Khaled? What did you bring us today? Yeah, so I brought something which is somehow big. So this is my <laughs> squash racket. <laughs> so I got it when I was 10 years old and I started to play squash in Egypt. Uh, yeah, and I stopped like when I was 18 years because I joined the university. So there is no time to, to practice uh, sport, but... I returned back again here in Leiden. When I came back, I found a good community here. They are playing a lot of squash uh, and we have ladder in Leiden. So I started to play like twice or three times per week with uh, my uh, with uh, our friends. What about you, Kevin? What did you bring us? No, I brought the uh, same uh, sport equipment. This is a flipper. Uh, we use this to bodyboard. Mm-hmm. Um, it's special for me because uh, I am bodyboarding since my 11th year. So it's pretty much almost 22 years now. And uh, I've traveled with this everywhere I go. Uh, it comes in a suitcase. And as you can see, it's a, it's a passion of mine. Uh, that is beautiful. Both of you are very sporty. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, we made also short profiles um, about your life in Leiden. Yeah. Why don't we start from you, Khalid? Yeah, Let's please. see where did you take us. Hello. Hello, Khalid. Hi, Tahir. How are you doing? Sabah al Noom. Sabah al Khair. Sabah al Khair. Yeah, Sabah al Khair. How are you today? I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. Hi. So, this is the whole family here? Yes, yes, this is my wife. Yeah. Hello. Hello, my name is Hagar. And Masmuk? Malek. Okay, your name is Malek? Mariam, what a view you have! This is amazing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I missed <laughs> Marwa. Marwa. Yeah. So, how did you end up in Leiden? Yeah, it's a short story. I got a call from a recruiter that we have a vacancy uh, to work for a pharmaceutical company in uh, in the Netherlands in Leiden. I am pharmacist by background, but also my wife, and he offered me a job and I accepted. And then finally, I came here to Leiden. So, where are you from in Egypt? Uh, I'm from Cairo, from the east of Cairo. Let's see how your balcony looks like. I'll follow you. Yeah, okay, let's go. I don't want to miss the balcony. <laughs> do you sit here often, like the Dutch people? Yes, sometimes I sit here and do some work with my laptop or okay. some calls. Uh, sometimes, yeah, I, I talk with my friends. We we got some uh, cookies or took some cakes with the tea, especially in the afternoon, yeah. Okay. Is it easy to find your uh, Middle Eastern food here, Egyptian food in Leiden, ingredients? Uh, not in Leiden. Leiden, there is yeah, some of Middle e- Egypt uh, food like shawarma, like falafel. But for specific, if you're talking about Egyptian food, uh, yeah, it's around Leiden, not specific in the country. How do you find uh, the Arabic influence here? Because there is a 
sort of proper Islamic center. There are yeah. a lot of mosques here. Yeah. So do you go to the mosques or visit the community or? Yes, yes. I regularly go to the mosque to uh, to the mosque to pray. So there are two big mosques here in Hijra and Imam Malik. And also my daughter started uh, at this before pandemic, of course, started to go to the mosque to learn Arabic because it's important to learn Arabic, uh, to learn Quran. So it's important for my kids to keep their native language and learn how to write and uh, read Arabic. Any favorite restaurant or place where you often go in the city? Yeah, there is a nice uh, Iraqi restaurant here called Tanur. I like it. It has a lot of, uh, uh, how can I say, meat dishes. Uh, so it is Arabic one and it's uh, very delicious. It is, I think, in the north of, of Leiden. So it's a mix of rice and dark lentil. Uh, also, you can see here, this is the tomato uh, sauce. sauce. Yeah, sauce. And here there is some sort of... Uh, pasta? Yeah, pasta, macaroni. So, and also there are some uh, cheese pick, yeah. Chickpeas. Chickpeas, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it's nice one and it's very healthy because there is no meat inside. So, I think the Dutch culture, maybe they like this uh, dish. So, you can pretend you are... Yeah. Yeah, so now this is the plate of uh, kushari. So you can see there is different layer. The first layer is the rice, the macaroni, and uh, the tomato sauce, and the fried onion at the top. And also we have our sauce, which is made of uh, uh, lemon juice, uh, banger, uh, also for garlic, for cumin. Yeah, and you can add also a uh, chili sauce if you like chili uh, food. So, okay. yeah, it's a very nice one. So you can try. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I'll try the first one. Mm -hmm. I like also the fried uh, onion. Okay. So who made it? You or your wife? <laughs> ah, my wife, of course. I'm only eating. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. good. From the video, um, I can see that you fed Tahir. Um, you prepared a special dish for him? Yes, I prepare. I prepared for him a very traditional uh, Egyptian street food, which yeah. is called kushari. Uh, kushari, it's like a mix of rice, uh, macaroni or pasta, uh, and fried onion with tomato soup. Is it like separate dishes? How? Because I don't know this dish. Uh, uh, yeah, you can eat it in, in one plate, uh, okay. as a shirt. Or, but uh, yeah, you can have your own plates. And this is very famous. If you visit Egypt, you'll find. Uh, at least you need to eat it uh, twice or three times per week for dinner or even for uh, for lunch and oh, it's nice. very healthy because it is uh, vegetarian, vegetarian it's yeah, nothing nice. yeah nothing nice. nice but it's high somehow high colors because i forget to mention there is some uh, dark lentil in, in it uh, mm. yeah <laughs> yeah very nutritious yes amazing thank you for thank sharing you. um kevin let's see where did you take us Good morning. Uh, good Hello. Morning. How, How are, are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's a very grey weather today. It's a uh, grey weather indeed. We had a couple of sunny days and now we get this. So, welcome to the Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go inside? Yes, welcome. What is uh, this place to you? No, I call this my home. My humble home. It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, not much. But the view outside with the, yeah, the Dutch uh, canal is perfect. And we have a big garden in the back. I live here with my girlfriend and a dog. How you ended up in Leiden? I, in 2006, I finished my, uh, my school in the Curacao. It's a Dutch colony in the Caribbean. And then I got diagnosed, diagno how you say it? Um, diag diagnosed. Diagnosed. Diagnosed with uh, autoimmune sickness. And yeah, they sent the biopsy from my kidney from Curacao to Leiden to the LMC. <clears throat> and then I said, okay, that's interesting. And then that's why I chose like something in the neighborhood from the LMC. So I came here to study. And then that's why I chose Leiden and never left. I fell in love with Leiden. These photos are from Curacao. Exactly. Interesting. No, it's, it's a kind of paradise. And that's a younger version of you? That's a younger version of me, yes, for sure. What do you do in your free time? In my free time, I have a dog, so we go for walks, long walks. Um, and I also have a collection of Lego. Um, yes, I can see you are a Star Wars fan. I'm a Star Wars fan. 
and I, I just looked briefly here. Yeah. Oh wow, you have quite a stuff here. Yeah, How did this start? Oh, Brady. who's Brady that? Is. This is Leia. Leia. Yeah. Oh, I can remember Princess Leia. Yeah, Princess Leia. So, uh, hey, Princess Leia. She's also a princess. So, uh, Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Franca. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. How you guys met? work actually yeah, yeah he was work. my boss sort of no. oh <laughs> yeah. so you serenaded your subordinate yeah kind of yeah i was our supervisor we were i was uh, working and studying it was uh, like a horeca like in the hotel service yeah. and then eventually yeah i came across her and invited her to Leiden. she's officially from rotterdam so so what was the top qualities that you liked in him in Kevin, yeah, uh, he's always happy, smiling. He's yeah, just a very social person, and he makes me laugh. And yeah, what about you? <laughs> what do you think you liked it in her? Um, yeah, she's really creative. I mean, uh, everything that you see here is pretty much her creativity going. Uh, These are your wild. photos. Yep. <laughs> wow. Back to Star Wars. How did it start? No, it's a funny story. Um, um, in Curacao, yeah, my mom is a Venezuelan. Um, and I used to watch the films with her. And she was a fan. And I, and I used to watch them in Spanish. So there where it started. And then it never went away. And the Lego passion. I always had Lego passion. And this is something interesting. What is this? This is a bottle of rum. <laughs> <laughs> it's a some it's a Venezuelan rum ah. you can buy it here and I, I can recommend you if you like a rum lover I mean, that's a very nice uh, space so you yeah. all share together we all share it together there's a bunch of cats there's my dog there's another dog and Leia is happy to live with the yes. cats yes, yes, yes. Okay, she goes that's... well with all the cats except oh, the that's... Up, upper neighbor cats oh okay but uh, yeah, and then it all started uh, that we decided as a community to start our nonprofit organization. And it's called Le Orangerie. Um, and then we, uh, it's a community of Portal. And then we decided uh, with all the neighbors together to that we are gonna take care of the, the garden. And then we get a and it's very interesting that people living on the first floor have access to the garden yeah, as well. Exactly, exactly. So they can come down and enjoy yeah, that. Yeah. And they make a lot of use of it. <laughs> Too bad. Um, uh, classical Dutch weather, huh? Yeah, it's a shame. But very I think cloudy. you get used to uh, the, the seasonal changes here in, uh, in, the, in the Netherlands. I think I absolutely lowered my any expectations from exactly. a Dutch weather. So <coughs> yeah. any day that's not raining is a good day. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you so Liga collection that your um, mother inspired you for s watching Star Wars. Yes. And then you picked up on the Lego. I've never yeah. heard mm. mothers watching <laughs> Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, my mom, my mom is a special person. Um, she is... Uh, yeah, she got me in 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 the video in the in the film industry from uh, Star Wars. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, mm. and um, yeah, it started uh, with that and in Spanish. So actually, all the main characters I know the their name in Spanish and not the the English name, but now obviously I know all the names. But that's how it started, and then it picked up, and it never went away. And the Lego, it started, but not with Star Wars Lego, and now, you know, Corona struck, and then mm. I was looking for a hobby inside. So then Lego and Star Wars came together, and oh. we started with that. So. What a nice combination. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's amazing, yeah. <laughs> that's lovely. Um, Khalid, yeah. um, you are relatively new to Leiden. Yeah. <laughs> so to speak. Are you part of any social groups, any clubs, any communities in Leiden at the moment? Uh, yeah, when I came first time to Leiden, I found some of Egyptian uh, citizens here. Uh, yeah, they live in Leiden and we start to have community, especially with my family. So usually we, 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 we meet on the weekend, mm -hmm. like uh, eight to ten families and the kids, they are playing together in some park here and there. But it's of course in the summer time, it's not in the winter. Uh, yeah, and also I have a good relationship with Islamic community here. Mm. So uh, I'm used to go to the, the mosque. There are big two mosques here. They are speaking in Arabic uh, 
uh, yeah, for Hijra and the Islam and the Imam Malik. <laughs> um, Kevin, you have created an NGO in Leiden together with your neighbors, you mentioned, yes. right? Yes. Called Orangerie. The Orangerie. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about that? Um, it started with uh, they uh, with me and a neighbor um, with the idea for um, yeah what what if we take care of our garden because we're the ones who always yeah mow the law, uh, cut the, the the trees and do stuff in the garden. So then we went and sit with Portal and he said yeah you have to get all the neighbors in the same boat. So we went and to spoke with all the neighbors, made a gathering, and then every neighbor said, yeah, go ahead. You know, I'm not going to do anything, but if you guys want to do it, fine. Uh, so we were like, yeah, no problem. We take the responsibility, and then, yeah, Portal is our landlord. Mm -hmm. They were really open with helping us as well. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, then we don't pay the, yeah, it's called hoveneers, the, the, the persons who come and yeah. take yeah. care of the garden, and that budget comes to us. But for you to self-maintain. Self-maintain yeah. and then invest in whatever we want. And yeah, you've seen the garden, I think, in the film. So it's a, it's a nice garden and the end result is really nice. Uh, it is you know. a beautiful project. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. seen it and it was fantastic. Are you planning to expand it to other neighborhoods as uh, now that you're a foundation? or this Yeah, is more that, like that's the plan. Um, that we maybe take it outside because now it's in the in, in inside the garden, mm -hmm. but maybe we want to go because we live in front of the the gracht, and then we want to take that as well to make it for yeah outside in front of the garden and the whole neighborhood. Yeah. Very interesting, and you can put my name on the list. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that would be nice too. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah, Khalid, you have a new baby. Congratulations, uh, by the yeah. way. Thank you. Yeah, and he's Dutch. Uh, no, that is Egyptian. <laughs> <laughs> if, you look, if, yeah, if you look to his face, it looks like Dutch, but yeah, I think it would be Egyptian. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, uh, one of my, uh, actually, that's one of the questions that I heard from almost every Dutch mm -hmm. uh, in Leiden and outside of Leiden. Are you Dutch yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you do not consider the baby Dutch, although he was born yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I, I usually received these questions from my family in Egypt mm. and my friends. Ah, you have Dutch citizen now. I said, no, 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 still Egyptian. <laughs> I heard that um, two of your kids have been um, more immersed in the religious community and studying actively Quran, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. So is the new uh, the Dutch citizen mm. and Egyptian national <laughs> going to be immersed towards the same community or as a Dutch person growing up in here would have a different path. What do you think about that? Yeah, so we like to keep the same traditional mm -hmm. our Egyptian tradition and the Islamic tradition for our kids. So we started with uh, our two uh, girls. We send them on a weekly basis to the mosque to learn Arabic because this is the mother language mm -hmm. and also to learn Quran. But now it's stopped because of COVID-19 and we plan also to do the same uh, for Marwan, the new baby. Yeah, but when he will uh, turn into like, uh, yeah, three or four years. But, you know, uh, learn Arabic, it is not uh, an easy language to be learned, especially if you practice it like in the mosque only for three hours per week. So, yeah, we, we want to keep this as is. And also we keep uh, the relationship between kids and their friends in Egypt and grandparents. They keep to call them on daily basis for video call, like for 30, 45 minutes. But the, yeah, so my uh, little daughter, she started to miss some uh, difficult letters in Arabic, like ha mm -hmm. or da. So yeah, she, she doesn't like practice this one. But now I think when we we'll go to Egypt in the summer, I think we'll focus more to, to have this uh, yeah language and letters. Yeah. yeah, kids are very easy to pick up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I noticed this when they started to learn Dutch. So my... All the daughter, she, she is my translator, actually. She is seven years old, but she is my translator. When I want, to, I go to Dutch. the street <coughs> and deal with the people. Because, yeah, I started to learn Dutch, but they acquired the new language very easily. Yeah, yeah. kids are a lot better than adults. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin, um, autoimmune disease that you have been um, yeah. dealing with for a long time. Um, how did you cope with it during COVID times? Especially, it puts you into the risk category, right? I uh, am, wasn't really uh, busy the whole time that uh, because I have that, that I have more risk mm -hmm. because um, yeah, I take medicine, take that controls it, everything. Mm -hmm. So 
yeah, I have no problem, no relationship with uh, COVID and uh, oh, autoimmune. Uh, that's stigma. nice to know. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a strong guy. <laughs> <laughs> Good, yeah. yeah, very sporty and strong. Yeah, yeah. That makes the immu immunity better. For sure. Um, <clears throat> Kevin, as um, as someone who is working um, in uh, in Janssen, did people approach you and ask you like, "What's going on with the COVID? We are having information shortage. What's going to happen to us? What is coming? All these questions." Did you get it from people yeah, all, that you knew? Yeah, all the time, all the time. Uh, yeah, where yeah, I work for um, a house uh, contractor for from for Janssen. Mm -hmm. So I don't work for Janssen, but I work for Electrofon to mm. uh, Pharmaceuticals. And there, uh, yeah, we're a house contractor. Um, yeah, they came. My neighbors came all the way. Like, uh, hey, don't can't you get a badge for us? And you know those kind of jokes, silly jokes. But yeah, officially, I'm not allowed to talk anything up with n not nobody. So yeah, yeah, and of course, you receive the question: which which one is uh, is more effective? Which yeah. the Janssen or AstraZeneca or for sure. blah blah blah? Yeah, for sure. We we'll always receive yeah. like these questions. Yeah, th there was definitely a um, big battle between yeah. the vaccine makers as well, like yeah. AstraZeneca, Janssen, and uh, yeah, Pfizer, Moderna. Pfizer, yeah, Janssen. obviously, and everyone was questioning which one I should take, which one I shouldn't take, and yeah. I know a lot of people have been waiting for Janssen to come around. Um, what is your take on the vaccine battle, basically, among the pharmaceutical companies? Yeah, I think it is uh, uh, economic war between mm. companies. Uh, each company wants to be the lead uh, for the vaccine and to sell a lot of, uh, of doses into the market. Uh, but yeah, from my perspective, I'm looking for what will be the most effective for the humans, which is more important. Uh, especially when it comes to uh, the vaccines, because vaccine is something critical and you can take it once or twice per, year, per, per life. So it's important to, to check what will be the side effects for these vaccines, especially for the elder people. Uh, but I, I believe in uh, the clinical studies and the result of each vaccines. And the most important thing, I think, to take your precautions from COVID-19 more than uh, yeah, taking the vaccine. Absolutely. What do you think, Kevin? No, I totally agree with him. Um, it's a battle who uh, wants to take the lead. And you see with the publicity uh, that takes a good uh, role of uh, in how you sell or not to sell. Um, but mostly, yeah, and what I think and what I usually did is, um, yeah, everybody says, yeah, I'm not taking the vaccine because it's been made too early, mm -hmm. too fast. Yeah. And then I say, yeah, I've, I've experienced the process and I know that a lot of people made a lot of efforts, a lot of non-sleeping hours mm. to produce this for mm. the whole world. Yeah. So if this was being in a normal project, we'll still be running tests. Yeah. But everybody put an effort, if, if it's government, if it's everybody did it, and then uh, it resulted in what we have now. So it's a, it's a collaboration of everybody uh, that made this possible. And that's what I try to explain to everybody and make them ease mm. for the fact of not taking it because it's not safe. Khaled, you come from Egypt. And yeah. Egypt has gone through a lot of violence, turmoil, change, transformation yeah. from Husni Mubarak to um, Arab Spring to Morsi mm -hmm. and now back to another regime. Yeah. Um, in your opinion, did Arab Spring help Egypt and Egyptians, or it made things worse? Uh, I mean, everybody's take was that, oh, it's such a transformation, such yeah. a change. But as an Egyptian, did you feel that? Yeah, it's it's difficult to answer this question. But uh, yeah, if we if we turn back ten years ago, after the Egyptian Revolution on Hosni Mubarak in twelve uh, on twenty eleven. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then uh, the Brotherhood uh, came to, um, Dr. Mohamed Morsi, Allah Rahamu, came to be the president and then he was removed. So people divided into two groups. After that time, uh, some people stand for uh, Brotherhood and yeah. other people stand for the current president, Abdel Fattah Sisi. But it's early to judge, uh, to see the change. Of course, there is some sort of instability mm. in Egypt, especially in the 10 years, especially if you is are... Is it political or economical instability? I think 
both, but mm -hmm. political will reflect on economical. So, for example, if you if you will see there is some violence in the country, you will not go to visit this country as a tourist, or even you will not go to work there. But uh, when the country came or became more stable, uh, uh, so I believe the economy will be uh, improved time after time. Absolutely understandable. Yeah, but I believe it depends. So. Uh, the Egyptians, uh, n some people uh, believe that uh, Egypt on the right tra uh, track, mm -hmm. and others say no, 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 we are not like uh, the, on the on the right track. We need to change or to do this change. So it's like what happened in every country in, in the world. Uh, no, nobody will like one hundred percent to agree what happened in the country. Change will take time as well. Yeah, and also the change resistance, especially for the elder people. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kevin, you're part Venezuelan. Yes. And Curaçao has been um, a refuge for many Venezuelans. For sure. Um, in the current situation. Yeah. Have you heard from your relatives? Like, what is the condition like at the moment in there? Yeah, terrible. Um, I speak with my, um, yeah, my, my aunt uh, with uh, frequency. And, yeah, I try to help where I can. My parents help them. But you have to, yeah, my mom was telling me a story. She deposited some money for them, like $100. And it's almost 300 million uh, Bolivars. Mm -hmm. So you, with $100, you become like a billionaire in Venezuela, you know. And yeah. you can do anything with that money as well. Either yeah. You buy like a bread for 100,000 Bolivars. So the price range and the presidents are also... Only people of family family that I still have in, in Venezuela is my aunts and my aunts. So uh, the elder stayed and all my cousins flee. All they the went to Mexico, uh, Miami, uh, everywhere. Colombia. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, it's a really beautiful country that goes to waste uh, due mm -hmm. to politics. Yeah. yeah. And it seems that it's going to take a while to stabilize uh, Venezuela. Yep. I think uh, it's not going to go f soon away. Mm. Um, well, almost at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. And we have one more tradition. We have too many traditions in the show. Um, we ask you to bring an, a photo of your favorite light on Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Why don't we start from you, Khalid? Who is your favorite, most favorite light on yeah, uh, I can say his name is Mohammed Kamel, mm -hmm. and yeah, he is a nice man. When I came here to Leiden to finalize my offer, I was looking for a halal restaurant, and then I found there is a, a fish restaurant. Then I entered inside and I ordered my, my I take my order in English. Then at the end, I found him, he, he was talking in Arabic. So I told him, are you Arabic? He told me, I'm Egyptian. And I was staying here like 30 years old. <laughs> so I, yeah, uh, I started to make communication with him. He helped me a lot. I consider him my big brother. Uh, so he picked up uh, me and my family from the airport. He arranged for my statement here, also to rent an apartment. And yeah, he kept to visit me on a weekly basis. So yeah, I like him and he is very, very helpful. So nice to have Leidners like that. Yeah, 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 I like him. What about you, Kevin? Who's your favorite Leidner? Uh, it's my neighbor. Really? The one uh, who helped us uh, start uh, with the... Uh, uh, Which yes, one? Is uh, that the man or the, the woman? Man. The man and the woman is Mario and Marianne, mm -hmm. uh, mothers. They live uh, on the corner where I live. And yeah, it started with, I came to see my house that they gave me the, the view in the backyard. And there it started, and yeah, now we have each other's uh, keys. We go, they come inside, they have a dog, and they, they come and take the dog outside if we don't manage in time. You know, so it's a, it's a really open-hearted people, and yeah. I, beautiful neighbors. Beautiful neighbors, for yeah. sure, yeah. Thank you for sharing your favorite Leidners with us, and thank you for being in our studio and sharing your story. Yeah. Well, that's the end of another episode of Hello Leiden. We are going to be with you again next Saturday at 9 p.m. Don't forget to watch and share and like. <laughs> we are almost in all social media accounts. And if you are a foreigner living in Leiden and you have a similar story to share with us, please email us at helloleiden at slotostad.nl. Have a good evening. That was Zemo Basanova for Slotostad TV. Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Hello Leiden. Leiden. Hello 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 Leiden